ask the Lord. You'll stop just reading your Bible. When people look and see that you're reading, you'll read your Bible because you want to impress your great God from Zion. My brothers and my sisters, stop trying to impress people because you'll never please everybody.
from the Lord. Get your phone, your iPad, your notepad and pen, and of course, old school, your Bible. Let's sit back, relax, as we dig into the Word of God. Yes, there is a Word from the Lord. Name, we thank you for your word. We ask you to open our eyes, open our ears, help us to understand. Oh, Father, help us to understand. For this we give you glory, praise, and honor. I will see you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. We have been studying concerning the last days, these particular times, and what we are supposed to do during these particular times and seasons. The Bible says of the sons of Issachar, that they had understanding of the times to know what Israel ought to do. Likewise, God is raising up men and women who have understanding of the times to know what the church ought to be doing in this last hour. So we have already pointed out according to Matthew chapter 24 that the master uh, himself said that one of the signs of the last times is that we need to take heed that no man deceive us. Because many, many, many shall come in my name saying I am Christ or I am anointed and they shall deceive many. He said, I also went on to talk there concerning um, there being earthquakes and famines and pestilences um, and so forth. And he talked about the love of many waxing or becoming cold in the last days. So we started to look at some of those things, and last week we started to look at messages the Master gave to the churches. And these messages, I believe, are, are very important and very pertinent. I believe that they are a part of the messages that needs to be preached in these last days. In particular, what he had to say to the churches. Now, in the book of Revelation chapter 1, and last week we read just about every verse of chapter 1, but if you remember, this is written by John, the beloved disciple, who wrote the book of St. John, and who wrote the books of 1st, 2nd, and 3rd John. This John was very close to the Master. As a matter of fact, there were three um, or four of them that really was close to him, and that he aimed to deposit more in than the others. If you remember, even when it came to the Mount of Transfiguration experience, he shall repeat James and John with him. And then when it came to Matthew 24, when um, Jesus told them that the temple would be broken down, if you read it from, I believe it's Mark's account, it said that Peter, James, and John, and probably another one, but I know those three, went aside privately and asked him, tell us where shall these things be? and what shall be the sign of thy coming, and what shall be the sign of the end of the world. So, uh, um, John was in the inner circle with the Master. And at this time, in writing the book of Revelation, he is now past 90 years of age. And he is the last living apostle of the Lamb. He is the last living one. Peter had already been beheaded. Uh, um, all of those others have been killed, and it's very interesting if you go online or read Fox's Book of Manners to see how they died and for their, for their faith. But John was still around, and Jesus had more or less intimated that he would still be around in John the uh, 21st chapter when Peter was walking with the master, and the master asked him, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me? And more than these, and Peter said, Lord, I love you. And Peter, and Jesus asked him again, Simon, son of Jonas, do you love me? And Peter said, Lord, I love you. And then Jesus asked him a third time, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me? And Peter said, uh, uh, the Bible says Peter got grieved because the Lord asked him the third time. And he said, Lord, you know all things. You know that I love you. And of course, Jesus remarks, so was feed my lamb. Then he said, feed my sheep, feed my sheep. Well. And then he told them how he would die. He said, when you were young, he said, you gird yourself and you went where you wanted to go. He said, but when you get old, another will gird you and take you where you don't want to go. And um, Peter looked back and he saw John. And he said, what about him? <laughs> and Jesus said, if I will, that he tarry till I come. What is that to you? And 
So um, some of the other disciples thought Jesus was saying John was never going to die. Right. But the Bible said Jesus didn't say he was going to die. No. Jesus said, if, he, if I build, I'm tired until I come. Well, Jesus came to him. He did live long enough. Jesus came to him in the book of Re and gave him the revelation. All right? Now, John is on the Isles of Patmos. And I know that sometimes you'd say, Bishop, you keep, re keep reiterating um, the same points, but it's important. It's important because I'm learning more and more. Repetition is the mother of learning. All right? So more and more, we have to keep hearing so that we can make sure we get it. John is on the Isles of Patmos because as a prisoner, as a prisoner, what had happened was the emperor ruling at this time was an evil emperor named Domitian. And Domitian uh, um, had John arrested. And when John appeared before him, Domitian demanded that John uh, um, call him God or call him Lord. And John refused. And so when Domitian uh, 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 um, got that refusal, he was so angry, he told them to place John in a vat or a barrel of hot oil. So they took a barrel of boiling oil and they placed John in it. And John had an experience similar to the three Hebrew boys. He came out not burnt at all. He came out without a burn. Amen. Hallelujah. God still is in the delivering business. Amen. Say amen, somebody. Amen. It, no matter what you're in, God can bring you out amen. if you stand for him. You see? And so um, and John didn't die. And it so shocked everybody, including the dominion, dominion himself, the emperor, that he said he wanted John banished. And he didn't want to see John anymore. So they banished John, placed him on, on the Isles of Patmos as a prisoner. And it was here that the Lord Jesus appeared to him. And he had this revelation. Now, notice again, please, uh, uh, in verse number uh, 10. Well, we start at 9. I, John, who also am your brother and companion in tribulation, and in the kingdom and patience of Jesus Christ, was in the Isles or island that is called Patmos for the word of God and for the testimony of Jesus Christ. I was in the spirit on the Lord's day. I, I, I said to you last week that uh, uh, people always argue about the Lord's day. Some argue and say that was a Saturday. And some argue and say that was a Sunday. I don't know which day it was. I just know it was the Lord's day. Amen? I, I, I'm, I'm back in this particular time, the Emperor Dominion would have a specific day assigned for himself where they would worship no other deity but him on that day. And he called that the Lord's Day. So it was, it's being submitted that really what happened was Jesus appeared on the same day, Dominion thought was his. Right. And Jesus said, this is my day. <laughs> this is my day. Amen. This is the Lord's day in your day. Yeah, yeah. Amen. So I, I, I just love the Lord's style. The Lord always has a, has a, a pattern, a pattern of when you think you bad, he just show you he, he bad. Up. Yeah, he you. Amen. And so he showed up on that same day that the emperor taught was his day to talk to John. Now, when he said, I was in the spirit, we already started to talk about this. There's a difference between walking in the spirit and being in the spirit. Yes. Walking in the spirit is a walk. <laughs> being in the spirit is an event. Yeah. All right. Walking in the spirit is a daily progressive thing. Being in the spirit is a, a instantaneous experience that one has right. with God. Walking in the spirit has to do with walking in the fruit of the Spirit. Love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faithfulness, weakness, and temperance or self-control. Being in the Spirit is an event that happens much of the time um, unexpectedly or suddenly as God takes you in that realm to accomplish a particular purpose or so that you could see what he wants you to see or know what he wants you to know. So when John said, I was in the spirit on the Lord's day, the Holy Spirit came upon him, and John entered into a trance. 
Uh, as a matter of fact, some translations of the Bible actually said, says that. It says, I was in a trance on the Lord's day. Now, what is a trance? It is when God literally takes you and it's like your physical senses are suspended. And at that moment, you don't know where you are. At that moment, the only thing that's real to you is what God is showing you or what God is telling you. Uh, are you flowing with me here now? So he said, I was in a trance on the Lord's day. God took him into the spirit realm. And he began to see and hear things in the spirit realm. All right? And so the first thing that he sees and hears is the glorified Christ. The one who has risen from the dead and now sits at the right hand of the Father. The glorified Christ. You see? And so he says he heard a voice, great voice, as of a trumpet saying, I am Alpha and Omega, the first and the last. And what thou seest, write in a book and send it unto the seven churches which are in Asia, unto Ephesus, and unto Smyrna, and unto Pegamos, and unto Tyre, and unto Sardis, unto Philadelphia, and unto Laodicea. Now, we, we, we um, want to really drive this point home. Um, there are some who, when I was growing up in the Lord, um, taught and were teaching that these seven churches actually represented seven church periods um, that started from then and went through the time of Reformation, the Dark Ages, the Reformation, and into today. So they say that we are now in the Lydocene church age. All right? I disagree with that. Um, there may be some bearing of that, but Jesus was not addressing different churches in different church ages. Jesus was addressing churches that actually existed. All right? I have proof of that. He said, John, I want to carry these seven messages to the church. How John was going to carry them to each church age? And John died Thank you very much. way back <laughs> at the age of 100. The Bible says that Jesus said, take these to the seven churches. And Jesus listed the seven churches that he wanted these messages to go to. Now, in him giving them to the seven churches, he is also giving them to every church. Yep. Yes. Amen. How do we know that? Because with every single one of these churches, at the end, he said, He that had an ear, yeah. let him hear what the Spirit said unto the churches. All right. So he was not just talking to that church. Lord. He is talking to Every church, every church, therefore, Amen. should be examining these letters yeah. to make sure that we are walking upright before the Lord Amen. and to check ourselves. Yes, Look at your neighbor and say, check yourself. Check yourself. Now, usually we check one another. No, check ourselves Amen. to make sure that we are lining up with the will of God. Now, let me talk to you, JCCMI, and let me talk to you, those of you listening uh, by way of YouTube or wherever you're listening, and you better listen good to me. I am warning you, I am warning you, as a man of God, take your religious mask off. It's time to get real Amen. with God. Yes, yes. I am warning you, it is no time to play the religious game. It time, as you know it, is over. Right. Oh, yes. Take the mask off. Amen. I am warning you, if you are playing around in sin and acting holy, holy when you come here, Jesus. trying to impress Bishop or trying to impress somebody else, that time is over. The only one you should be trying to impress right now is the Lord himself. Because 
we are now heading towards the rapture, the catching away of the church. And you need to make sure you are rapture ready. God knows you. God knows you better than you know you. God knows your thoughts. God knows your plans. God knows your schemes. God knows your ways. God knows what you're doing. God knows what you ain't doing. God knows you like a book. Amen. Amen. Nothing you think, nothing you say, and nothing you do is hid from him. Amen. He sees it like it's daylight. So you need to check yourself in the light of what he has said to these seven churches because he is talking to the church. Yes, sir. Did you all hear me? Yes, sir. Yes, yes. I said, did you all hear me? Yes, sir. The time for the games and the hypocrisy and the pretense and uh, I don't know that physical mask you got on. I don't know about the mask of pretension. That time is over. Amen. 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 And I've had to judge myself in some things. And um, I'm just encouraging you as we start to go through these seven. Judge yourself. Don't have nobody else. I remember when you, listen, that time is over. Amen. Amen. Judge yourself. Praise the Lord. Amen. So, in the book of Revelation chapter 1 again, verse 11, Jesus said, I'm Alpha and Omega, the first and the last, and what thou seest, write in a book, send it unto the seven churches which are in Asia, unto Ephesus, and unto Smyrna, and unto the Pegamus, and unto Thyatira, and unto Sardis, and unto Philadelphia, and unto Laodicea. And I turned, John said, to see the voice that spake with me. So the voice came from behind him. So he spins around to see who that is. And being turned, I saw, now I want you to try and envision this, okay? Um, I saw seven golden candlesticks. And these candlesticks were apparently in a circle. Because he said, in the midst of them, Seven, in the midst of the seven candlesticks, one like unto the Son of Man. Now, come back with me a minute. And you want to make note of this, please. Make a note of it. Seven is God's number of perfection. Seven is God's number of perfection. It was no accident that God said seven churches, all right? Seven was God, is God's number of perfection. Notice also, and we know he's talking about the churches, we'll prove that in a minute, that they were golden candlesticks. Very interesting. In the old covenant, when God spoke of them making the ark of the covenant, he said that he wanted them to cover it and overlay it with pure gold. So, it now in this new covenant, he says these candlesticks were made of gold. Interesting. Now, in the old covenant, once that was overlaid with gold, the presence of God could come. And the church in the eyes of God are pure gold that can handle the glory. God sees the churches as golden candlesticks. Amen. Glory to God. That's awesome. Now, a candlestick meant that the church is supposed to be the light of the world. The churches are supposed to be the light in the midst of a dark and sinful world. Amen. The world is supposed to look and see the church shining yes, to know that that's where they can go and get help Amen. and get hope. 
That's very interesting. Let, let's go on oh, a minute. And we can go into more detail about that, but not right now. In the midst of the seven candlesticks, one like unto the Son of Man, clothed with a garment down to the foot, and girded about the packs, it meant that he had on a robe, girded about the packs, or around the breast area, with a golden girdle. Ooh. His head and his hair, ears, were white like wool. Now, let's stop here a minute, because you got people preaching a lot of fool right now. <laughs> This was not telling us Jesus was white. No. This was speaking of the glory of God that was on him. Where was he white or was he black? He was a Jew. He came, his flesh was Jew. Jewish flesh. And no, you're not a Jew. You're not a Jew. There are three classes of people in the earth. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 32. Write it down. There's the Jews, the nations, and the church. <laughs> now, all I asked one time ago, you used to be Jew or a nation. But after you got born again, you became a part of the church. So you're not a Jew. You're part of the church. Glory to God. I said glory to God. And that's the best place to be. Because I hear people go like, oh, on the road talking about we are the real Jews. You ain't born in Jerusalem. You don't even have no descendants from there. Physically. Nope. Amen. Come on, man. Our people are really giddy. You don't need to make them more giddy. Oh, Lord. If you're born again, you're part of the church. Yes, sir. You're part of the body All of right. Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And that's the best one to be in. Glory to God. So, this is the glory of God on the master. You got to remember where he sits now. He sits at the right hand of the one who is light that no mortal flesh can approach unto. That's what Timothy said about, it, about Jehovah. He is pure light. And Jesus is now sitting at his right hand. So this glory of God is on Jesus. When he appears to John, and his head and his ears were white like wool, as white as snow. And his eyes were as a flame of fire. Now, underline the term, as a flame of fire. Keep in mind these descriptions. Very important. Jesus appeared like he did to John on purpose. All right? You'll see that in a moment. What else? And his feet unto fine brass, as if they burned in a furnace. Underline the phrase, as if they burned in a furnace. And his voice, as the sound of many waters. Underline, as the sound of many waters. It means he spoke with authority. He is the head of the church. He spoke with authority. No council is the head of the church. No. no apostolic association is the head of the church. No five men and ten men who think they run the show is the head of the church. Jesus Christ is the head of the church. Amen. And he's the only head of the church. Glory to God. Very important. Very important. Very important. Very important. What else about him? And he had in his right hand, underline the term right hand. Oh, glory to God. He had him in his right hand. He could have had him in his left hand, but he also had him in his right hand. You said, well, Bishop, what does that mean? Right hand in the Old Testament always signified three things. Number one, it signified power. Number two, it signified authority. Number three, it signified favor. Yeah. Glory to God. He had these, these stars in his right hand. He didn't have them on his foot. He had them in his right hand. He didn't have them in his left hand. He had them in his right hand. Very specific. Hallelujah. 
Now your money won't get excited and all that, but boy, that's good news to me who is a preacher. Yes, then you find out what the stars represented. Hallelujah. It signifies a place of favor with God. Yes, sir. A place of power Amen. and a place of authority. That's why David then would pray and ask God to move by his right hand. Yes, sir. I always remember my former mentor used to say, God, move by your right arm of righteousness, yes, strength, yes, and power. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Oh, wow. It's something about the right hand. You go check it up in the Old Testament. The place of authority, the place of power in God, the place of favor. Watch out when sin start to pray. And God, I'm asking you to move with your right hand. In this city, watch out when they pray like that. Their, their old mothers of Zion and old papas of Zion begin to pray. Watch when they make mention of that. And God of righteousness, strength, and power move by your right hand in this situation. Boy, something get ready. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Ooh, glory to God. My God, I'm gonna preach myself. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Right hand. Yes, sir. He had him in his right hand. It didn't, it didn't have to say that, you see? No. It could have said, I just saw seven stars. Mm. It could have said, I saw seven stars floating in the air. It could have said that. Right. But no, he had those seven stars right in his right hand. Yeah. Woo! Glory! Glory! The place of endearment. The place of endearment. <laughs> All right, notice this now. And out of his mouth, underline the words out of his mouth, Woo! Went for a sharp two-edged sword. Underline two-edged sword. You better underline sharp too. Yeah, I just want to do that. And his countenance was appearance was as the sun shining in his strength. Woo! Woo! When I saw him, John said, I fell at his feet as dead. No, he didn't mean I went down on my knees. He said, when I saw him, I dropped. Oh, yes, Amen. That's falling under the power of God. Yes, sir. Yes, you sir. See? <laughs> Hallelujah. Mm. And he laid his right hand upon me, saying unto me, Fear not! I am the first, and I love it. Jesus said, this began with me, and this will end with me, and in him is no end. I am he that liveth, and was dead, and behold, I am alive forevermore. And Jesus carries his own amen with him. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Just in case you don't want to say amen, Jesus carries his own amen. He said, Amen. Amen to that. I have the keys of hell and of death. Great God, you know we can preach there a while, eh? Yeah. Now, he's going to now tell us, Terry, the three divisions of the book of Revelation. Make note of them, please. Write the things which thou hast seen. That's, one. That's the first division. Yep. And the things which are the things which are going on right now right. what i'm about to tell you for the churches that's number two right. and the things which shall be hereafter that's number three so the book of revelation can be separated into three categories the things which were meaning the vision of the glorified christ and of the candlesticks, right. and of the stars in his right hand, mm -hmm. the things which are, which deals with his messages to the churches, mm -hmm. and the things which will be hereafter, right. which deals with after his dealings with the churches, concerning him coming back as the Lord of Lords and King of Kings. Hallelujah. Now, um, let's go here then. He's about to tell us. Now, let me give you a word of advice those of you that are studying to be ministers of the gospel and so forth. Don't ever give the scriptures a meaning. Let me say it again. It takes a while to get through. 
Don't ever give the scriptures a meaning. Amen. The scriptures have uh, three kinds of writings. First, literal. Y'all understand literally. Literal means he says what he means, he means what he says. Second, symbolic. He uses symbols. And that's what we are seeing here with the stars and the candlesticks. Yeah. They are symbolic. Yeah. Are y'all with me so far? Yes, sir. First, literal. Second, symbolic. And third, he uses parables. Yeah. Now, here's the thing. Y'all listening good? In every case, when it's in that particular reading or elsewhere in scriptures, the scriptures always explains itself. God don't need you to interpret what he has to say. <laughs> he reveals it all. So it's not right for anybody to say the Lord showed me in a vision what the seven stars are. And the Lord showed me in a dream what the seven, the seven candlesticks mean. No, Jesus told John. Exactly what they are. Yes, now you all can see why I got so excited when I say, Oh, the stars carry in his right hand. Yeah, because I'm being held in his right hand. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> Glory to God. Yes. Oh, hallelujah. Nikki, you should have shouted on that one for my man. Amen. I'm, I'm in his right hand. Yes. I'm in his right hand. I'm in the hand of authority, power. And favor. Yeah. And y'all know me well enough to know, right? Woo. If God didn't want me to know something, he shouldn't put it in the book. Because when I find it, Woo. the mystery of the seven stars which thou sawest in my right hand. Say right hand again. Pastors, if you're listening to me, be about to give you a word. It should encourage you. The and the seven golden candlesticks. The seven stars are the angels of the seven churches. Yes. Woo! We'll talk about that in a minute. And the seven candlesticks, which thou sawest, are the seven churches. Well, hold up now. The seven angels of the seven churches. The Greek word for angels says angelos, angelos. And it actually means messenger. Really, these messages are being given to the pastors yes. of these seven churches. Yes, now, you have to understand something. Oh, I'm going to throw something here. Some people ain't going to like it, but I'm going to throw it anyhow. When Jesus was ready to talk to the local churches, he went to the apostle who was over those churches. Not to give the messages to the church, but to give the messages to the pastors. Okay, okay, order. Jesus, order, order. And the pastors were responsible to give it to the churches. Listen to me! I don't care what you call yourself, apostle, property, Baptist, teacher, whatever. Local churches need pastors. Yes, yes, they need pastoring. Yes, they need shepherding. Yes, they are sheep. sheep. They need a shepherd. shepherd. Yes, sir. Amen. Jesus. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So you may be a, an apostle elsewhere. When you are home, shepherd God's sheep. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Amen. Ah. Ah. Hallelujah. I am JCCMI's pastor. Amen. When I go from here, I may operate as an apostle, I may operate as a prophet, I may operate as a teacher. When I come home, I am your pastor. Amen. Yes, so Bishop Biden, you go to these other places, you carry on so bad, but when you're here, it's like you just take your time, because I'm loving you yes. as a shepherd. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus tells you, told John, 
you give these to the pastors of these churches. Let's go with this other point. He has the pastors in his right hand. Whoa! I'm gonna hit. I know you got Randy to say amen now. Only Randy and Stephen may say amen now for some reason you're mad. Sister Strong, you better be the woman say amen corner. Listen to me. It is not your place to touch those who God has called. They are in his right hand. They are his. He will judge them. Who are you to judge another man's servant? He will judge them. Your job is to pray for them. Yes, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Amen. Say amen. amen. But don't go easily talking against a man or a woman of God. You don't want to fool the people who Jesus got. Saul, he said, I reject him. Yeah. He said, choose someone now someone else. who have a heart after me. That's it. A man after my own heart. Amen. Name David, you know? Uh, uh, uh. So Saul picked up that the hand of the Lord was on David. And every chance he got, he tried to kill him. Yes. 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 Tried to kill him. Yes. So David started having to run for his life. My God. And one day they came David was standing in the place and Saul then was down in the valley and David then was up in the mountain. And David then came to camp in the night while Saul then was sleeping. And there is Saul sleeping. And David's servant say, boy, God, deliver your enemy. And that's how some people are. Some people will try and get you to do people in. Say, so see how the Lord put this one right here in your hand. And David say, man, you ain't scared to touch the Lord's anointing? Oh, no, y'all ain't hearing me. As far as David was concerned, it didn't matter that Saul was in disobedience. It didn't matter that Saul was trying to kill him. The fact is that Saul had been anointed with the oil which represented the Holy Ghost. My brothers and my sisters, take heed that you don't touch people who've been anointed with the Holy Ghost even if they're wrong, even if they are in error. Your job is to pray for them, but don't touch who God has anointed. Don't touch, don't touch. David refused to kill him. And then one come boasting saying, how we kill him? David kill him. But David said, weren't you afraid to touch the anointed of the Lord? If there's one thing I've noticed in our day, it's the slack mouthedness of some Christians who love pulling down anointed men and women of God. But pastors, be encouraged. He got you in his right heart. Yeah. The place of authority. Yeah. The place of power. Yes. The place of favor. Amen. 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 Woo! Hallelujah. I said, Woo! Hallelujah. 
I carry favor with God. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. This takes off any pressure I would have had to try and impress you. You're too small for me to impress. I'm in his right hand. I just need to impress him. Mind y'all ain't hearing me. Some of y'all live for the praise and approval of people. Thank you. You need to learn how to be impressing the Lord. Let your life be busy about impressing that's Jesus. It, it. If you let your life be busy about impressing the Lord, you won't have to find out and have somebody wake you up to be the church on time. Because you're trying to impress the Lord, you're going to be there when you're supposed to be there. If you go after impressing the Lord, you won't have to let somebody try and tell you do this and do that. You're trying to impress the Lord so you will be doing your duty. I, I'm preaching to somebody. If you're trying to impress the Lord, you'll stop just reading your Bible. When people look and see that you're reading, you'll read your Bible because you want to impress your great God from Zion. My brothers and my sisters, stop trying to impress people because you'll never please everyone. Everybody. But if you live to impress the Lord, everything will be just all right. And if you live, break God and hear the Holy Ghost. If you live to impress the Lord, you'll attract the people into your life you're supposed to attract. And you'll push away the people who don't mean you no good. When you live in to please the Lord, Jesus. When you live in to please the Lord, you stop being a people pleaser. And when you stop being a people pleaser, those who are trying to suck from you will start to go away from you. Amen. Just live. 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 Amen. Can't press it. Just live. Oh, yeah. Ministers, pastors, he got you. Amen. Preachers, Hallelujah. he got you. Hallelujah. In his right hand. Amen. Woo -hoo -hoo. My God, my God. Oh Lord, the time is just about up. I ain't even get to where I want to get. But I go. But live to impress the Lord. Amen. Make it your goal for the rest of this year. I'm going to live every day to impress the Lord. I'm not going to try and impress people. Because no. people will let you down. Yeah. I'm not going to try and impress them. Because oh they're the same ones who one moment will be shouting and saying, yes. Hosanna in the highest. And the very next moment, they'll be saying, crucify him. That's when you put your hope in man. Yes, sir. That's why the Bible says don't put your trust no, in man. No, the arm of flesh will surely fail. Yes, My brothers and sisters, just live to impress the Lord. Amen. Amen. Anybody with me this morning? Yes, Amen. Any Lord pleases yeah. in the building? Amen. Anybody that just won't please Jesus? Jesus. Won't please him in how you think? Yes, won't please him in what you say? Yes, won't please him in what you do? Yes, live to please Amen. the Lord. Live to please the Lord. You listening to this right now. You may have been doing all kinds of things just to please people. You may have even been pretending to be a Christian just to please people. Your whole life may have been around and walk around pleasing people. It's time to change that. To learn how to live to please the Lord. And listen, when a man may please the Lord, Proverbs 16, 7 says, he'll make even his enemies to be at peace with him. Hallelujah. Live your life to please the Lord Jesus. And if you've been living to please people, get on your knees, get on your face, and ask God to forgive you for being a people pleaser. Thank and you. just learn how to be a Lord pleaser. That's Hallelujah. It. And if you don't know Jesus as your Lord and your Savior, just pray this simple prayer and mean it from your heart. Lord Jesus, come into my heart. Wash me from sin in your precious blood. I believe you died for me. I believe God raised you from the dead. And right now I make you my Lord and my Savior. God bless you today, children. So glad that you have joined us for this time in God's Word today. And we want you, please, to go ahead, if you want to see other videos coming to you from Jesus Christ Center Ministries International, subscribe 
to this particular page. Like us on Facebook at Jesus CCMI. And by the way, if you have prayer requests, please email us. Our email address will be on the screen in just a moment. Email us and let us know how we can pray for you. Until we meet together again around God's word, remember, Jesus Christ is Lord and divine love flows.